we have the nuclear embryo and also in the cytosol. So we will this chapter actually will go over uh, the system modification, which this uh, this whole video is the system modification of the nucleus. So we will go over most of them separately today. So again, some modification occur right after the RNA molecule is transcribed. Then the, uh, the process itself of, of translocation to the cytosol in itself is a regulatory process to, to arrive. And at the cytosol, also several enemies or, I don't know, uh, um, regulators exist which affect the same target. will also be divided as, as a section where a bunch of uh, the section will intersect. So we will start with the processing, processes that occur at, at the nucleus, then the transfer to the nuclear envelope, which is the gate, which are uh, linked between the nucleus and the cytosol, and ends with the cytosol rocket mechanism to transfer to the nucleus. the limit of about 25 to 30 nucleotides, which is what we call the nascent RNA, the growing RNA. It has a, it encounters a chemical modification, a division of the chemical molecule, which is specifically a seven methyl one a group, which you will see in a minute. And this chemical group is added on the 5.0 end, end of the RNA. RNA molecules are transcribed from the 5.0 to the 10.0 end. Okay, so we're now looking at the 5.0 end of an RNA. This edge, these three dots here, indicates that it's still being transcribed, or this is where the RNA are still, this green part of the molecule is still being transcribed from the genome. And already, the difference about the strand cell is one phosphate that was naturally here. So here, before any reaction occurred, we had a black phosphate, but here, a naturally occurring phosphate has turned to this shape, strand cell here, and the capping reaction, or the capping enzyme first removes the natural phosphate, the one that's transcribed here, then another part of the end of the capping enzyme attaches a GCP, a guanosine two phosphate, which is actually located up here. And lastly, there's an attach a separate enzyme that transfer a methyl, the green here, which is a methyl group, which transfer a methyl group from another molecule, that's not an end, to the N7 position on the ground, the green position of the ground region. And we get the cap. So this is, so this is the 5 prime cap. First chemical modification. Is this a coding RNA? Yes. So to, from what I know, well, there are some non-coding RNAs, meaning the RNAs are extracted from the genome and they do not code for protein. And I think it's a huge, it's a large fraction of them as well also are kept and polyadenylated, which is a, is a shown, to my knowledge, that some fraction of the non-coding RNA are not kept. Okay. I don't know how, how they are not, how they are guarded, how they are not protected, but it's still not, you know, it's not a textbook uh, information. It's still, still is a lot of uh, investigation. Okay. 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 okay, so we will see, we will see later on, because it, it links to other, other regulatory processes in the cell. Okay, but uh, you know what, for now, let's Exonucleates from the from the five prime edge. So when this if this edge will be exposed, so there are a lot of exonucleation exonucleases at the cytosol that will if if leave the red RNA from the five prime edge. And first of all, this this chemical molecule prevents them from leaving the cell. Five to three exonucleation this one is here. Okay, from this moment and actually after the moment after the stage where the RNA reaches the cytosol or or goes through the gate, the nuclear pore. So if it's not naked or, or, or empty or sits by itself, then it's actually blocked or covered with uh, proteins that are called HNIC. And when we say the gate, 
we want to kind of recognize and see. So we see that we see that indeed so the wh white line here is the RNA molecule in the nucleus, and it's covered with this red with complex pairs of proteins, and also the other components as well. Also, other RNA molecules, but let's let's focus on the protein part of these complex pairs. So it's indeed we see that it's indeed it's covered with lots of proteins, which are from the center of the action RNA. Okay, these proteins. Of the containing sequence of uh, the polymerizer of the 
person who has done that for me and I've been to join the course and I and directly facilitate the addition of a donor body. Because the prolongation of the Chromium chain is performed uh, the facilities of the Chromium chain is performed by the Chromium chain. is the process of exclusion of several fragments from the free mRNA and it's going to become in the mature RNA and the rejoining or the remixing of the remaining fragments of the mRNA. And this rejoining of the remaining fragments can be done in several different combinations if we give rise to several different mRNAs as a single uh, mRNA uh, transfer. that will be left in the mature RNA and some that will be removed and, and degraded. So each gene with the same, tra with a given structure can give rise to several different uh, variants. So for instance, if you take the red fragment, yellow and, and blue, you'll get this uh, species and if you get uh, uh, red, green, blue, you get another one. And this in its turn will give rise to different protein structures, right? So each one, each fragment codes for different uh, amino acids and that's it is estimated up to 60% and the more updated number is about 80, 90, I think it's next year it will be 120% uh, of, of all, this is very close to go, of all transcription units in the human genome and I'll turn up to this slide. So anyway, it's, it's, a, it's a big, it's not a, a, an esoteric phenomenon, it's something that we humans have missed with the, with the living. Uh, and mRNA are different in different cell types and in a given cell, the different states of the cell. So you see this again, the bare relation state of the mRNA. What is just a word about immunology, so the fragments that are left in the mRNA, that remain in the, M the mature M mRNA, are called axons, with E. Not, and not to be confused with axons of the neurons, the neuronal projections that are written with an A. So these axons are written with an E to denote that they exit the nucleus. And these parts, that are left behind inside the nucleus are called introns, which I can say in the, in the nucleus. So it's a bit confusing because everyone thinks that introns will be left in the mRNA molecule, but actually left in the nucleus. And so here the bare and I thank you for this for the mature mRNA. Okay, now let's do the following experiments. Let's take uh, uh, an mRNA of a given gene, reverse transcribe it in DNA with a simple reactivation. fragments will be nicely fit, nicely aligned the genome. These are the exons. And in between them, there will be gaps that, uh, that mix in gaps. And these are the introns. And if we do the same thing for lots of genes, and then align everything on the exon intron junction from several, from several sequences, and don't try to generate, it will pop up. So, what are these from several sequences? For instance, these are Exon intron junction. Sorry. If you want to define like a pipeline, pipeline type, right? You have the G and the U, and these all bear 100% assurance. So that gives us assurance of several sequence. At the other side, at the intron exon junction, you have an A and a G again, 100% uh, assurance. And in a certain distance from this defined Referring to twenty or fifty base pairs, we have an adenosine again with one hundred percent assurance. This pair is the branching point for the splicing reaction. This will be shown in the next slide. But it's not just a pair that we have an, an adenosine, uh, like uh, in some distance from the single uh, splice. So here's 
also interesting way to frame it with the stone is much of the center portion, you know, so this is uh, maybe the uh, line here, can be taken away and taken out without affecting the structure. So this is it just to show that indeed these are the, the component differences that Reactive reaction is a series of two process implication reactions. And the end result is a, is a splicing reaction. So ester is, ester is a bond that's via an oxygen, and reaction implication is when this bond is destroyed and, not, and a new one is formed. That's the principle. So this is what we see. Two ways to first two implication reactions. So let's go through them. Okay, the first reaction is doing the cyclic field of the adenosine from, from the, 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 from the, the twist from the edge of the right hand of the downstream ester, let's call it then ester one and two, that will be <coughs> ester two, affects the phosphorus group of ester one. Since we see the structure, even even when it's three or four sides back of the adenosine, we see that the side dynamics of the individual are the same. The same This uh, affects the phosphorus group like C, which means that a, that a link is formed between them, so we leave. Right after, so this is the first two implication reaction. Right after that, the oxygen from the from, of ester one affects the phosphorus of C like here, so from the same one. And this is the second process two implication reaction, which gives rise to this product ba back to the normal structure of RNA. It's blood, base. Base, concentrate. This is like a, all of the inspiring reactions. So this laureate or lasso is, which is actually the excited spiritual, stays back in the nucleus and is determined. This is the type of nucleus spiritual that we have now. And now you have two type forms on. So, you, so now, now you can you cannot actually distinguish between a phosphate that sits right here and one and phosphate group that sits right here between the bases. So this is like a back to the normal structure of the of the <coughs> Okay, so this is the reaction. <coughs> so some for some exon neutron exon sequences for some of these constructs, it was shown that they can spon they spontaneously splice in vitro. So you don't have to have anything else, any promoting uh, element for them to be spliced correctly. But still, the, this process happens a bit uh, differently in vivo, in cytosol cell. And it is actually the same reaction, only it is promoted by several uh, components, two levels of components, one, one to say. The first one are cellular RNA molecules, small nuclear RNAs, numbered V1, or maybe even six. Yes, these are numbers from one to six. There are only five of them. Like the number four is missing. Uh, nine times one. And then on the second level of, of, uh, of the complex, that promotes the splicing reaction is made of protein, which is what we call the organic structure. Okay. <coughs> so the small nuclear RNAs are RN RNAs. They are made. They are coded from from our genome, and they then bind the three RNA. The first one binds to the in, in the exon neutron uh, junction. <coughs> the second one, the, and the other one, but here we just focus on the on the first two. It binds, and the second one binds at the branching point where the adenosine sets. Remember the adenosine. Okay, so now note that while V R V one sorry have complete alignment with this nucleus, no mismatches. V two have complete alignment with this region, excluding the, the adenosine. And this caused the adenosine to be, to, uh, to uh, protrude to the, from outside of this linear molecule, in a relatively linear molecule, and hence they formed to the first process ester implication reaction that we have just described right here. This is the same adenosine. And it is an, an, uh, an effective oppressor of this chemical reaction, which indeed uh, protrudes into Now, 
start to look like it's flexible. It's flexible on the full section that performs uh, the most of flash injection in the cell. And again, the amount of the U R of the, of the U can be defined with small nuclear RNA, which is what also we see like here. And, and this core of small nuclear RNA is also covered or wrapped with another layer of proteins, which is about 7 to 18 proteins, uh, which also um, uh, have a part in the promotion of flash injection. Okay, why is what I use uh, in this complex? Okay, it's okay, but uh, this is what I do there. Only this time it happens right here in the in the, in the core of what of what um, of the U R um, and the role of the U in the proteins is to own it, it says to put the attacker on the molecule or the atom in the attack in the right orientation and this time to engage in the RNA as any enzyme or the main proteins do. Okay, this is kind of general, but it's maybe it's repeated but still on the debate, but just to mention it the concept itself. So elongation step of transcription, the transcription elongation is shown to be coupled to splicing. And this coupling is still under a lot of a lot of research, but for now let's just say that the transcription stops or goes wrong, so splicing will also stop. So again it will, it will be Again, there is some kind of coupling between the tr transcription and elongation process, where the RNA is being passed from slice from the from the genome and the splice from the RNA. <coughs> okay, we see that some of the the, the, the transcription sequences in the intron region are trying to generate, which means <coughs> they can occur in a high uh, frequency in the genome. Uh, arbitrarily, and so actually the, a, a function of splicing from the in vitro usually has to do with other sequences, for instance, sequences on the exon this time that recognize another family of proteins called SR proteins. So these are proteins that cooperatively bind two elements on the exon and recruit the first unit of small nuclear uh, RNA, which then together with the other small nuclear RNA and the addition of proteins form or not to form, build uh, a functional splice sequence. Okay, we, we mentioned that some introns are self-splicing and some constructs of exon, intron, exon uh, can be spontaneously spliced in fescu. And actually in mushrooms, it still exists that um, some RNA fragments in mushrooms can be self-spliced without any type of any splice event. Okay. Which means what I'm saying is that gave rise during the evolution to the small nuclear RNA. So small nuclear cells splicing introns then turn into uh, promoters or helpers in splicing of other N RNAs. And hence, and, and turned into the small nuclear RNAs that are in higher orders. All right, let's see just a couple of examples of uh, the role of or alternative splicing <coughs> in the neuronal system. So the first one will be about post-traumatic stress disorder. It exists extremely briefly, and uh, I can just uh, link it to give, give a significant, uh, uh, a functional significance to this process. Okay, so post-traumatic stress disorder. So this disorder occurs in, 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 in person who enter, who went through a trauma, and then develops some chronic stress state at the mental level of the syndrome and also hyperactivation of the immune system. So this is sort of the physiological uh, manifestation of this uh, disease or, or, uh, or disorder. Okay, we know that between these two levels there are there's a relatively uh, well-known mechani mechanism that feeds them both. <coughs> we know that cytokines, which are elements of the immune system, can act, can go through the blood-brain barrier, 
And they recognize that some receptors and some brain regions that have to do with the feeling of, of stress. We know that chronic stress state uh, activates three uh, certain four lines, the peripheral immune system. And as we actually introduce uh, a vicious cycle or a positive feedback between the two levels, where yeah, where the inflammation promotes stress, which promotes inflammation and activation. Okay, this is why we play at this point. And the parallel end is that we already mentioned acetylcholine exchange, which is an enzyme that sits in thyroid cells and stores stress, and hydrolyzes thyroid cells, the lowest level of thyroid cells. This is this was just one variant of a single gene, acetylcholine exchange, which is denoted S because it sits in the thymus. So it's acetylcholine uh, SOS synaptic version, the synaptic variant. But in Wheatix, although more rarely or more lowly expressed is the acetylcholine SOS wheat wheat variant. It's called wheat wheat because of its structure, because it's, it included another exon that was not included in the S in the synaptic variant. And now I'm going to shown to be pro-inflammatory is one observation. The second observation is that it increases in post-traumatic stress disorder patients. And so there's a lot of research in, in, in Wallace lab, which is where I came from, but I come from, and other labs as well, that try to link this with single observation and give a, a mechanism with the working hypothesis that affecting the ratio between these two variants may serve as a way to disconnect this link. And hence, we stop this, this vicious cycle. And note that stress, the level of stress is the same. So I'm handling this slide just because, OK, it's not a textbook uh, data. It's just giving some something that's still on the wall. OK, we will take a break and then see another example of slide two, which is the rest.
תלוי בעסק. אז אתה צריך לשלם בהפרשי ובמקלפי. אוקיי? במקלפי אופן ובהפרשי ובמקלפי. But each of the different
they were slightly editing switches uh, from NCI. It's another kind of nucleotide that was not mentioned yet, but it's another type. And from CKU, the nucleotide is with similar structure. And you know, very, very briefly from the editor zone, which is a complex that perform, promotes this reaction with complex that uh, includes proteins. How do I say? Usually the, the red, pro the blue structure here denotes several, several proteins that participate in the reaction. And the messenger RNA that is R pair, and the one is called the guide RNA. So by it, the exchange will be performed. It's called nucleus, so it's making a guide. Okay, so after the RNA is performed in the process, so it's kept, so it's only memory, it's a one stand nucleotide, specific, big nucleotide, it's one that can be changed to different nucleotides. This is a, a single example of uh, editing a neuronal uh, phenomenon, expression. So this is shown, okay, let's begin with catechin, tyrosinin, the neutral theory that you already know, uh, has an important uh, role in mood regulation. Several experiments have told us this in animals and uh, again in humans. Uh, and the action of many anti-nucleotide drugs is, is mediated through this uh, neutrotransmitter by the C-carotene, this serotonin transmission. Okay. What I show you here is, is, is a conclusion from a poll of patients in a trial of an extreme cohort. So the patient cohort here is, um, is, is composed of victims of suicide that undergo severe depression for several years. And when you take this, this group of people, this group of, of uh, participants, uh, there is a, a, a seemingly significant high frequency of cell mutation that changes with the editing to a single nucleotide, which emits various changes of splicing that will occur on the serotonin receptor. This will affect the efficiency of the serotonin transmission. And this is really not enough time to conclude that the idea is that this is might serve as a, as a molecular explanation for severe depression phenomena or uh, disorder. Okay, so again, mutation changes the editing to the serotonin receptor, which changes the splicing, which affects the efficiency of the transmission for serotonin. Okay, so this was things that happen in nature. And now the mRNA has to be translocated to the cytoplasm because there is a protein and the gate that through which the mRNA is accepted is the nuclear pore complex. You see it on the, on the, uh, the nuclear envelope. Okay, a bit about its structure. So in the, in the nuclear part, it has a basket-like structure and from the cytoplasmic part, you have these red long filaments and through the channel or through the gate itself, there's still a filament which has a function of all that interacts with the, anything that passes through the uh, through this gate. Okay, we just mentioned a small, small, small protein roughly about 50 uh, kilodaltons in size can be seen effectively through the nuclear pore complex. This is a, a view of from inside the nucleus. Someone has managed to see the microscope inside the nucleus. Of the from outside the nucleus, so it's really, it's a nice structure. Okay, now the side view will show us just a bit about the uh, adapter, the interactor, the proteins that interact with it while the mRNA passes through. Okay, so here is a mature polyadenylated cat spliced mRNA, the red, and it interacts with two uh, HNRP proteins that are there because these are the, the traces of the splicing reaction that occurred, right? So uh, these traces have to be here because they interact with other adapter, we can say proteins, which are the mRNA exporter, small complex. And two of them interact with the short filament inside the nuclear pore complex, which is essential for the molecule to pass through the nuclear pore complex. Okay, so if the mature, if the RNA molecule will not be spliced yet, it will not be recognized by these adapters and will not, be will not interact effectively with the short filaments and hence will not pass through the nuclear pore complex. So this is how free mRNA are leaked into the nucleus. They pass only when they reach the end. Okay, so although this chapter is not about RNA, still through the nuclear pore complex some sort of proteins can pass 
to achieve funding micro energy for carbon intensity and I'll stand up this chair and stand aside and say just because you know not because there are micro arrays and these hydrodromes or the safety of the hydrodrome is a factor here where they can protect food safety. They can use this micro arrays I think I read it you know producers that say that there are micro arrays there. I'm not I don't know.
subject of any micro MA, micro MA one page C uh, number up to about 10,500. So these are for, this is for another sub uh, for the for serialization of micro MA. So there are such a result. So there are several micro MA that is equal to one, one, seven, two. For instance, if uh, its promoter is correct, right? It has correct sequence of its promoter. So right now we put it as being a coincidental. So a coincidental method, the expression is micro MA increases, the result is suppressed several subjects of MA. Okay, second example would be in the context of Alzheimer's disease, where researchers drove this neuronal pathway, then added artificial amino beta, then extracted fetal RNA from the cell, and profiled the levels of additional new micro RNA. There are some smaller show that most of micro MAs are down-regulated, meaning to transfer the two amino beta, and consequently the amino acid is a small step. Uh, and thrombosis then goes up. And you can also talk about which um, uh, genes do they target these micro MAs that go down. And the genes that they target have to do with what the specific receptors in the cell, uh, for instance, exon guidance, you this uh, these two pages by email. Yes. Okay, so this time is 23rd of January. Uh, I will be here again as I planned to. Uh, the 9 a.m. and uh, the length of the assignment is time, first time is four maximum. It's challenging with this with text for most students, but it's, it's worth five. You don't need more than six Please submit your time, your assignment with with the student ID only, just with the text that they got the link without the name. I I won't I love to do this uh, line. If the box in front of the access to secure it, write your form. I, I could assign it in my own way. So don't send it by email because they have no way to use this form. Right right after choosing the paper and before starting the work, please make sure which minute the proper part. So in, in the sense that you.